we're using the law of intention and desire. Um, we're going to explore that a little bit more. Okay, today we're talking about the law of intention and desire. Okay, and so the thing that, that I understand about this law is, one of the most wonderful things about this law is that you cannot have a desire without the ability to create that desire. So within every desire, there is the ability, the organizing power within that desire to create it. Okay, so when we're living in this field of pure potentiality, you know, the ocean of consciousness, okay, anytime you, you here you are, it's your little fish self, okay, in the ocean of, of universal mind, anytime you come up with a little great idea, the organizing power of the whole field goes into action and you will start attracting to you other little people other little people will start flowing into your life because they are interested in some way or other in that idea or that intent that you've set up so it could come as a as an opportunity it could come as a set of circumstances it could come as some strange thing finding a praying mantis in your hair but the organizing power of the universe is, is, is unflawed. It, it will always produce the nature of your desire if you hold that desire. So anytime, you know, that's the beautiful thing. If, if you say, I want to be a radio announcer, you have within you the ability to do that, the power to do that. And, and by holding that vision or that image, you will find all the right circumstances, people, and so forth to move you that direction. And if you want to be a great soccer player or whatever, you have the ability. You, in other words, you can't have the desire without the organizing ability to, to create that. And you're also working in conjunction with the whole universe. There is nothing happenstance about your desires. If you want something, then it's in concert with everybody else's desire at the same time. So when we're saying we want peace on earth, understand that we're working in conjunction with a lot of other people to want that at the same time. And there is the ability to create that or we wouldn't have the desire in the first place. Now, when we start thinking about all the people that are creating war and, and so forth, then we, start, we could very easily doubt that. But remember, you can't have the desire if there's not the ability and the organizing power for that to happen. So that's the thing that uh, I appreciate most about this law, is that if we're planting a seed into this, into this ocean of universal mind, then that seed is immediately activated as soon as it enters the field of pure potentiality. It's immediately activated, and immediately it magnetizes to it the right circumstances. So it's, all, it's working from the, from the get-go, and the nature of that idea in the first place is energy and form. So that form begins to attract like form to it. So people who have the same desires as you do or have a similar desire that can facilitate yours and theirs at the same time will begin coming together. Um, so everything in this whole field is energy and everything in this field is, is information. So I'm a, a kind of energy and information and you're a kind of energy and information and we draw together based on the similarity and the magnetism of our information and energy. So that's why this group is together. I mean, that was pretty obvious from the get-go, that, <laughs> that there's a lot of similarities here and a lot of similar intent and desire for everybody. But this whole field is filled with that. It's all energy. And the nature of the energy is wherever you put your consciousness. So if you want, it, if you want lots of great stuff happening in your life with wonderful fantastic memories and, and fun and joy and playfulness, then you raise it to here. And if you're finding a great, some kind of a great payoff for being down here, then that's where you stay. And people actually make that choice. And isn't it interesting that somebody who thinks of ill health, ill health, ill health, and what could go wrong, what could go wrong, and what could go wrong, live that way? And their whole life is reflective of that? because whatever they're setting up, they're constantly drawing that to them. And they won't even see another possibility. If there's some magnificent cure for whatever they have, they won't even look that way. They'll be looking the other way because they are fixated on this lower energy. So it's like planting a seed into the garden. And then the second that seed hits the garden, all the right influences begin to work on it. And it begins to blossom. The one th thing we do not have control over in the, this law of intent and desire is time. <laughs> we don't have control over time. We do have control over the intensity 
and the amount of energy we put into our desires, our intentions and our desires. We have control over that. But if, if certain things have to happen in the universe for our intent to, to blossom and to grow, then that's what's going to happen. And it might take six months, or it might take a year, or it might take an hour. It's, so you get the, the choice of where you want to put your intention. You get the choice of that, but you don't get to control the timing. Darn it anyway. <laughs> so it's, uh, everything, is, everything in the universe is the same. It's the structure of the form and the energy, the information can be different. The structure itself. We are, we are structured differently. Different. Our t intelligence, even our body style, is structured different from a tree or a blade of grass or a flower or an animal. But we're all made up of the same energy in a different molecular form. And, and human beings are the most evolved because we actually have a nervous system and there is nothing else, you know, an animal would have a nervous system, but they don't have the reasoning capacity. So um, that kind of makes us responsible in a way that it's up to us to hold the highest view because when we hold the highest intent and the highest desire, then we affect everything else. Then all the trees, the animals, and everything else, including the praying mantis, corroborate and, and uh, collaborate to make the same symphony working. So subjectively, we are our thoughts and our feelings, our ideas, our emotions, our instincts, our drives, and our beliefs. And objectively, we are this body, the world, and the field of our desires right here as it's working. It's all the same thing. It's, it's uh, on a finer level, on our coarser level. It's all the same thing. You are never, ever separate. You are always in the ocean, always in the ocean. So you always have access to the ocean, always. And if you want to fine tune your mind, you can listen and hear from that silence within. You can hear from that. You can't hear from this. These, these instruments are not fine tuned enough to be able to hear the universe. But you can hear it this way. You can hear it in your mind. You know, if you're willing to fine tune yourself, the only way I know to get there is to meditate. To learn how to bring our energy at the same rate and vibration as the whole universe. And then to learn to listen, to get into the quiet, and to listen. We can hear everything going on out here from this. But we can only hear the universe from, from this, from our deeper self. Our mind can tune into it just like a dog can hear a finer, a finer noise than the human ears can. But we have to make, do the self-discipline to create that listening, that, that receptive mode to be able to receive the universe. And that's how we receive the information. That's how we receive the answers to our prayers, our questions, and so forth. That's how we're, we stay open to our desires and what's going to create and cause them. Because you are connected to the whole universe, when you, so let's think of it this way, if your energy, you know, was way out here, okay, you could even, if I'm thinking of somebody across the oceans, my energy can expand all the way across the oceans. People, um, because, because I am not just this little body, I am the whole field, if I think of someone in a country in Africa, if I think of some person in Africa, Herb. Well, he's actually in India. But if I think of Herb, I can tune into his energy because Herb has a certain collection of information and energy and which I can visualize and feel. And then I can tune my energy into Herb in India. And so can you. And that's why uh, you, we hear stories about the dogs that will go into a wailing moan or something or barking or something when they're masters are shot or something happens to them in a different country at war or whatever. And so it's the energy that changes, it fluctuates, and that's what the animal is picking up on, that fluctuation. So when we leave our body as in death, you know, we, there's a fluctuation in the energy field. You know, and if we're fine-tuned, we can feel that, we can sense it. So I'll say, something doesn't feel right about so-and-so, because I can feel it. If I think about it long enough, I can even ascertain what that is that doesn't feel quite right, okay? You can too. I've trained my mind to be able to do that, but you can do the same thing. The universe is always the same. If you're in chaos, it's not gonna get chaotic. It's gonna just stay calm, and you want your answers, you go to the calmness. Okay, and if you wanna stay chaotic, then you're feeling out of connection, or you're not feeling connected to it. 
to the peace that is the universe. Here's the thing you want to know, I want you to know this, <laughs> and that is that human consciousness is flexible. So the interesting thing about that is you can change your mind. So no matter what you were raised with, people tell me this all the time, well, I wasn't raised that way. So what? Change it. You know, Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote The Four Agreements, always talks about changing your story. Okay, if you, were, if you grew up with this idea that I can't have successful relationships or I can't be rich, and you don't like that story, that's the story the people around you had and you don't want it anymore, change the story. And I really think it's a good exercise to write out a new story. Write your new story because whatever it is that you believed in the past is moot. It, does, it doesn't really have any relevance unless you want it to. And if you want it to, then you're stuck with it. But if you want to change it, you can change it. You know, I've always had this energy. Well, no, change it. I want a different kind of energy. I want the energy of love and peace. Change it. So you can, your, your consciousness, your mind, your thoughts are yours. And you can make them, you can change them, rearrange them any which way you want. If you believe that you have to be unhealthy and you decide, I don't like that story anymore, then change your thinking and decide, right now I focus on the consciousness of health and vibrancy. I focus on health and vibrancy and nobody's going to change my mind because that's what I choose. Think about this though, you, if you're saying, I don't want to be an ill health. I don't want to be an ill health. I don't That's want to so be an ill health. It? What's the picture that you're projecting? Ill health. It's all ill health. So we have to come up with a new story. My old story was ill health. My new story is vibrancy. I can run. I can skip. I can jump. I can, you know, I can jog. I can do yoga. I can do whatever I want. That's my new story. And that's how I see myself. And that's how I begin to tell myself the truth. You know, this is, this is who I am today. And even if you don't feel at this moment, you're beginning to program your body, your mind to move in that direction. So we have to be willing to go, yes, yes, that's great. Oh, I love that. It's wonderful. And I taught myself to say yes, even when there's something in me going, oh, I don't know why this. Yes, uh, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Years ago, I realized I, I wasn't a great receiver. And so, and this would came from a friend of mine. She said, Gene, you're not receiving. So I started to examine that. And, and I said, well, I'll observe myself. And then I'll see if that's true. So here's my story. So, <laughs> so um, some, we, I taught a class one night. And then we, a bunch of us went to dinner. And somebody says, well, I'm buying your dinner. And I went, oh, no. Um, OK. <laughs> 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 and there was this thing inside of me going, oh my gosh, you know, because I was moving into a whole different arena. And, I, and, I, and even though my normal thing would be, oh, no, 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 I went, okay. <laughs> and I thought, this is the beginning. That was it. I caught it. I caught it. So from then on, I went, okay, so you're not so good at receiving. <laughs> so, so you're going to start changing that right now. So I made a rule for myself that whatever is being offered, I receive it. I mean, it, assuming it's a, it's a very positive thing. If that is what you want, if you want to change your whole energy field, then you've got to be willing to accept the hard stuff and go a different route with it. And so that was the way I started changing it for me. Is like, if they're offering it and it's a positive thing, I'm receiving it. Because you make a new rule for yourself that goes, this is the way my new life works. I receive money from all over the place and I don't know how it comes and I don't really care and I'm receiving, thank you, thank you. So we, we have the ability, we have the ability to choose, which is wonderful, and we also have the, the nervous system. We can begin to feel these changes, and we can feel when it's time to you know, make, do something different. So you have to be willing to operate from that. We, when we're working intuitively, we're feeling the change. We can feel that change. We feel it as an inner, an inner thing that happens, an inner nudge. And, uh, and that's how we begin to move in a different direction. Okay, that which you give attention to increases. Okay, so if you're saying, I want a money coming from all directions and easily and bountifully and just magically and wonderfully, then you feel it, you think it, and you put attention on that, and you begin to notice. It might be that you find pennies on the ground in the beginning, and you pick them out and go, oh, okay, it's coming. It's good. Okay. Um, and that which you take attention from withers. So think about this. Think about relationships that you've been in where you've just decided, oh, this is going nowhere and I don't care and whatever, you know, and then you just, it just kind of dissipates after a while. It's just, just not getting the energy. Or a lot of people, they'll be married for a long, long time and they just quit giving each other attention and it just kind of dissipates. Okay, so that which you put attention on increases, that which you withdraw attention from dissipates or decreases.
There's only two ways to go with energy. You give it or you withdraw it. That's it. So if you're in a job, in a relationship, in anything, if you're giving it energy, it will increase. And here's the thing that, that amazes me about people in life is that if we want to increase ourselves, we've got to be actively increasing ourselves. <laughs> we've got to actively make that an intention. We have to be growing all the time. We have to be asking questions and receiving answers. We can't stay where we are. It's not the nature of the universe. There's only two directions. Expansive, depletion. There's no middle ground that this is the way you can stay forever. It doesn't work. <laughs> it will not work. Until we ask, nothing happens. Let's just go over that quickly. Unlike your past programming, be clear about this. It is okay to ask for what you want. It's necessary. Learn a new habit of asking and never, ever, ever, ever let go of it. Once are indeed spiritual. Why? Because everything is spiritual. It is part of being an empowered being that we learn to ask. Until we ask, nothing happens. And when you ask in the high energy of appreciation, not begging, not pleading, not imploring, but all the energy of appreciation, the energy of the universe unites to answer your call, providing we allow it. Whatever you ask for, you receive it. Ask for guidance, you will have it. Ask for the presence of appreciation, you will have it. If we ask to feel the love of the universe, we will feel it. Ask for ways to increase your income, it will mag you will magnetize these opportunities to you. When respect and reverence are present in our request, the universe stands ready to rush in with answers and assistance. So here's the thing I want to make the biggest point with. When you are operating from this highest energy of love, appreciation, joy, then whatever you ask for is magnetized like that. It's so quick. It's so immediate. And it's working. You may not see the result immediately, but it's working.